We're going to move on to Central Michigan. And the Chippewas, of course, Jim McElwain's bunch. They went 9-4 and four last year, got their first win over a P5 team since 2017 when they beat Washington State in the Sun Bowl, and that was a last-second game. Uh, they looked like the more athletic and more physical football team against Washington State, which is a bit surprising. Um, they had to hire a new offensive coordinator this year, so they went out and they got Paul Petrino, which could be interesting. Uh, they got their quarterback, Richardson, back, along with the nation's leading rusher, Lou Nichols. They got to develop some wide receivers uh, because they lost Khalil Pippleton there, uh, along with Ja'Cory Sullivan. But uh, Dallas Dixon being back definitely helps. He had 15.4 yards per reception last year, eight touchdowns. You got to find somebody that provides the explosiveness that Pimpleton did. Uh, when it comes to punt returns, everything, they didn't have a single other guy return a punt other than Pimpleton last year. And he was explosive. He averaged over 19 yards uh, per punt return, and he had two touchdowns. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Um, along with that, you got to figure out what's going on with the defense here. Uh, the defense was pretty good, but you got to figure out who replaces the defensive ends, Hairston and Sadiq. Uh, they combined for 38 tackles for loss and 12 sacks last year. Uh, you're also replacing linebackers and defensive backs. Their, their roster strength right now is number 124 in the country which is not great. The offense is number 65. That's pretty good. It's high, high up in the MAC. Um, I think they're going to be fine. They won 7 of 8 down the stretch in 21, including that Sun Bowl win. Uh, they went 4 and 1 in one possession games. you got to figure, you know, can they replicate that? Because that's going to be interesting. Um, you know, can the new guys limit explosive plays more than they did last year? I, I don't know. They were number 78 uh, in defensive explosive rate. That's that's going to be, I don't know, that's tough. Uh, they do return defensive end uh, Thomas and Coombe, and they do return defensive tackle Jacques Bristol. So this is a team that, you know, you, you lost eight. By the way, they did lose a second-round offensive tackle, uh, Bernard Raymond. So they lost him, and then they lost their right tackle, Luke Godecki, uh, along with their safety, Alonzo McCoy. So they've got some big holes that they got to fill, but man... The way Richardson played last year and the way that that offense moved with Lou Nichols, I am high, high, high on this team right now. Uh, brother, I've got them going 9-3. and three. Like, I okay, think... Well, they went 9-4 and four last year. I mean... Yeah. Their so projected SP like Plus... Their their SP Plus record is 7-5. Uh, is and five. Um, They went 8-5 and five against the spread last year. Uh, so it's, it's not inconceivable that they could go, you know, 9-3 and three again this year. Um, they were eight and four heading into the bowl game last year, but I, I look at this schedule and the way that it sets up, like I, yeah, I think they're probably going to lose at Penn State. They're probably going to lose at Oklahoma State. I, I think most everything else is winnable. So I, my only yeah, other loss is really at Toledo. They, yeah, yeah, they could they could go ten and two if they want it. You know, if, if everything falls right, I'm with you. I like the uh, addition of Trino there. Um, if he can bring you know Daddy's offense. Uh, that we have seen be unbelievable in college football yeah. to a G5 school, man, look out. Look out because that thing is explosive. And, and you know, I wonder, can you install it in one year with, with you know, younger and experienced guys uh, kind of around you talk about the offensive line and stuff like that. But um, I, I think they have potential to be real good. I have them eight and four. But that's because I think this conference, this side of the conference, every conference game, while I think they could win them all, I, I also think they could lose two of them just because I, I think it's going to be a meat grinder. I think yeah. week in and week out between, you know, you've got them. You mentioned Toledo. Uh, you've got Northern Illinois. You've, you've got, you know, Eastern and Western Michigan. I, I, I think this conference, this division is a meat grinder. And, and I think it's going to be real hard. To, to just go undefeated through it. No, so I, I don't think it. you're wrong. They, they do play and at I, Toledo. I got, uh, yeah. I yeah. have no damn idea what games they'll lose. <laughs> they you play, ask me right now, Yeah, I, I don't know. They play at Toledo. They play at Northern Illinois. And they've got at Eastern Michigan. The The other road conference game is at Akron. And I, I, I'm feeling pretty strong that they'll win that one. But again, uh, we don't really know what to expect from Joe Moorhead's bunch. So 
I mean, you never know. Look, like it, the, the Mac is always young, crazy. They're green and, and and yeah, I mean, inexperienced. That's yeah. what we know. But if there is anybody that would be able to develop wide receivers fairly quickly, uh, I would I would trust a Petrino. <laughs> I would that's trust right. a Petrino. That's right. No, no, that's that's what I'm saying. That <laughs> offense has potential to be. Yeah, really real, good. Real, real on fire, and maybe not this year. Maybe not this year. That might be putting the cart before the horse. But I don't if, know. Uh, with, if they with, can hang on, if they can hang on to them, they can build. With Lou Nichols and uh, you got uh, uh, good gracious uh, Daniel Richardson, the quarterback back, like you got experience at the at the points where you know it really matters. You got some leaders on this team. Um, they got a, they got a strong shot to be really good this year. Really good. Now, now, now here's the other thing. That's a lot of hope that he might be his daddy, and we have seen many a times guys aren't nearly as successful as their daddies. So that's, that's let, true. let's just under understand. Well, his that his that brother. Is, that that is is hope. <laughs> but, I'm sorry, yeah. brother. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, but, I, but, but but not everybody is the same as their family. No, you're not but wrong. You are not just wrong. Just because one guy's real successful doesn't mean the other's going to be. But the potential true. is there. It certainly is. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.